Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Shamshir Sound. My name is Ali and Adam, and in today's episode, we're going to talk about The Last Step Part 6 in the Migos Narcos remix. Today is just about artwork and making the visuals. So I went ahead and made a kind of just like a simple cover art. I grabbed the original Migos uh, Culture 2 album cover art. And I just like, for some reason, was feeling some Star Wars theme, some random theme. So I just made like a bit of it blue, a bit of it red. I grabbed these like lightning bolts from Pexels. You can always use a site that has royalty-free, commercial use friendly, copyright-free images like Unsplash, uh, Pexels, just to name a few. They also have videos as well. And that's great if you guys are not too good with creating something from scratch and you want to work with an existing image because I do that all the time. But here it doesn't really matter because it's, you know, it's a bootleg, it's a remix, it's an unofficial remix. I decided to call it remix because it, it doesn't use a lot of the original track. It's almost like its own track. So I thought, you know what, let me just call it remix. It's okay if you guys want to call it remix, bootleg, edit, you know, the, the naming, it really, at the end of the day, it's it's not that important. Don't let someone annoy you and be like, it's a bootleg, it's this. It doesn't matter. Just call it whatever you want. As long as you know what you're working with and that you know that it's like a, not an official remix. So that aside, working on the Photoshop stuff, I then fired up Z Game Editor and I was working on it for a while. And um, I'm going to start with all the different elements and show you guys like how they stack up. Because with me for Z Game, I'm... You know, I'm still like an amateur, I'd say. I know Z Game Editor pretty well, but not to say that uh, I don't think I'm okay with Z Game Editor, but I feel like Z Game Editor has so much power and uh, it can do insane stuff. And I'm going to talk about that in a separate video, this wizard here. So firstly, I added my image and you can add your image in the add content here, add pictures. So I added my picture. I made it really large. And then I started just using different elements, moving them around. I started with this flare and the flare added like a nice background. I then added this, the stack trace, which is just this kind of like scanning Metroid Prime thing going by. And though it looks pretty crappy here, the color correction then takes care of it. So we have some color correction that adjusts a bit of the gamma, makes it a bit darker. And then I added this lava, but the lava is being automated. Um, the mix levels being automated and being played at a different part of the uh, track during the break. Then we have this, the goop flow. So this is giving you a little bit of like waves. Then we have this, which does a lot. The box then is like this uh, filter, this kaleidoscope kind of uh, feedback filter. And uh, that is doing a really cool job at kind of taking those elements and creating some motion. And then we have the fluids. I use this a lot. The fluids is sending stuff forward and that's using the gravity Z. The gravity Z allows you to move stuff kind of forward so you can move it upwards, downwards. You could make like a flame effect. There's a lot of cool stuff and that's why it's like really up to you. It's just up to your uh, creativity, what it is you want to do. So moving on, I also added the core dump. I like using this a lot. Uh, it kind of adds like this matrix kind of binary feel and I'm using the binary instead of hex. The binary is what gives you that zero, one, zero, one. Then we have the reflective peaks. So this won't do anything right now, but it's a bouncing waveform for the audio. Also wave simple, which is also a bouncing waveform. And then we have these two as well, linear, which you'll see at the top and bottom. Linear will also be a kind of bouncing EQ, spectrum analyzer. Uh, I also added this 8-bit pad thing, whatever it's called, pads, because it gave a nice little uh, like color in the background, a nice glow. And then to glue everything, I added some bloom. Bloom uh, really just works the same way with video games. The bloom, you just got to customize it how you like, find that threshold. So a lot of this is visual stuff. And if you guys are just new into Z Game Editor, just go ahead and just mess around with the stuff. I'd say just experiment because uh, with Z Game Editor, sometimes you stumble upon really cool combinations by accident. So I'm going to go ahead and play this back and just show you guys like an area of the track. So you can see here the waveforms are bouncing. We got the other waveform. This is the waveform simple, I believe. And then we have the linear at the top and the bottom. Uh, later into the track during the break, I think it takes a break and then this lava is kind of coming in. You can see there so some cool stuff there. Pretty simple, but you know, I think that it's, it's, 
nice it's nice to do it it's it's a kind gesture and definitely cool to do it when you uh do that instead of just having a static image i think just gives it a bit more eye candy and uh, i don't like to go too extreme but with this one it kind of worked out and um you know i i find that it's just a matter of experimenting and sometimes it can take hours i think in this other one this one i did like spent a couple hours in there yeah uh, but it's not because like I spent two hours to get to this result. I was just experimenting, seeing what worked, you know, moving the layers left and right, cloning stuff. Sometimes you'll come to a point where like you want to make something incredible, but it's it's a bit difficult, a bit harder than you envision. But that's okay. So ultimately, I took this and uh, what I did, I'm going to show you guys here. I actually moved the track forward a bit. I like to do this. I like to render a bit before just so that Z game editor doesn't like st uh, start um, too late. So I like to render a bit before. So I have a bit of pre rendered before the track actually drops. And then I like to do the same for the end. I like to render a bit further on just in case it cuts off. Um, when I'm happy with Z game editor and the way it looks, you can also save that preset. I save many of my presets. You can save them. And go ahead and go to export video. That's what I did. You know, give it a name, choose a good directory for it. And uh, I called mine Z game underscore YT, meaning YouTube. I made it 1080p. And then from there, I chose a really high bit rate because I'm going to re render this in Sony Vegas. So I want the file to be high quality. But if you're not, if you're just putting it to YouTube, you could get away with like 20 megabits per second. Also, here I hit this 2x super sample, which will render it at a higher resolution and down convert it. And then I have 30 as my frame per second. Of course, you could do 60 or something, but I'm doing 30 FPS. The audio codec for me is not important, but if you guys are just straight up taking this and putting it on YouTube, then definitely choose the highest bit rate possible. But for me, I chose like 128 because again, I'm going to take this video and I'm going to edit it and put my MP3. I don't want to use the audio that's contained in Z Game Editor. I find sometimes Z Game Editor gives me weird glitches with the audio, and I don't want that to happen for YouTube. One last thing here is, of course, this stuff here, you can copy this if you'd like. It says here, um, please attach the info when you share this video. It's not necessary, but if you'd like to put this in your video description at the bottom, it kind of has author credits and the people who um, provided uh, help or created some of those shaders and those plugins. And you can always copy that to your clipboard and then paste it in like a little notepad or something. So I might do that. So I'll just paste it. I'm going to keep this stuff. And then when you hit OK, it's going to take a long time, guys. Rendering uh, a video can take like sometimes really long time, really long. Sometimes I've rendered like a video for a mix and it's taken like an hour or something. So that's really going to depend on how many plugins you have in Z Game Editor. Um, the power of your graphics card as well. I think it's using OpenGL for the back end for rendering. I might be wrong, but uh, at this point, I'm happy with all this. What I'm going to show you guys right now is uh, what I'm going to do with the naming of the file before I upload it to like Mediafire or any website uh, for people to download or SoundCloud even. So I have a folder called Final Masters. So I'm going to rename these to the appro appropriate name. So Migos, Narcos, Ali, Natum, Remix. Um, same thing for this one. So I got two periods there. Now you're going to want to make sure you go into properties and go to the details and make sure you give that the right name in there as well. Um, you can also change some of that stuff here. You can see here the BPM 125. All this looks good. The reason why I do that is because I don't want it to be called Final Master. So let's see here. Detect Tempo. There we go. Came with the information embedded 125. Let's import the wave. Let's just double check them. Make sure that they're okay. It looks like they're fine. This one is a bit longer, but it's okay. I'd rather leave that a bit longer than to re-render the thing. So that looks good. You just want to check these details because like while you still have the file, might as well check that out. Make sure there's not a problem or something with it. And it looks good. So from here on, guys, I'm going to take that art and I'm going to use that on a website like SoundCloud and I'm going to upload the MP3. You could also upload the wave, but I'm going to just upload the MP3. For YouTube, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that Z Game Editor render and I'm going to put the MP3, render that in Sony Vegas, throw it on YouTube as well. And then from there, it's really up to you. You can just take your art that you created, throw it on other 
outlets. So again, the websites I recommend you guys check out, I recommend you guys bookmark Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S, and Unsplash. Unsplash is also great, and they're going to give you a lot of inspiration if you're thinking like a certain mood, a certain idea, and you want to work with some image, because then you don't also have to, you don't have to credit the author, and you can use that for a commercial release. Like you can release a track on Beatport or on, you know, wherever, Spotify, this, that, with that artwork that you've taken. You don't even have to credit the author. You can if you'd like. So I hope you guys liked this video. I just wanted to explain what I did with uh, Z Game Editor. And that's pretty much a wrap, guys. If you guys enjoyed this, remember to smash the like button. Remember to hit the subscribe button. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.